Hello, everybody. Episode 28 of the Practical Magic Show. I'm here with Christina Berkeley, who is setting up her situation over there, getting us shared and broadcasted live. But I am very excited for the show. So those of you who follow or are just tuning in, welcome. Happy you're here. The Practical Magic Show, I like to call the pen and teller of the business world, where I talk to magical people who... My defini definition of magic has evolved along the year, but essentially the magicians that I, I see someone as a magician who is able to create really awesome results in the world, like practical, the practical part, but in a really magical way. So there's no burning out, grinding, you know, 10X your effort type of stuff, which is fine sometimes, but like as a sustainable means, it's kind of boring. And so I like to find out what other people are doing that, create magic in their worlds inside and out. And so naturally, Christina, you should have probably been on the show at the very beginning because Christina is one of the most magical people I know. And we don't know each other that well, but we've been in the same world for a very long time. So when our previous guest recommended you, it was like one of those duh moments because Christina is a coach slash mentor, but you also have, as I wrote in my intro of you, this very kind of magical duality to you where you bring these really different worlds together. You're a really, you're an empire building coach. And then this magical shamanic witch priestess, you know, you create really powerful results, but you do it in this really incredibly aligned way. You use games, you use tarot cards, but at the core, you also use like really deeply rooted practices and mastery. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about you. I think you are absolutely the real deal. And that inspires me a lot. So thank you so much for being here as we talk about walking to your edge, mm -hmm. what that means and how it creates magic in your world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, for some reason, that thought, I mean, I, I phrased it differently when I was thinking about it a few years ago. Like, how is it that I create what I create? Because I realized there was really a there there, you know, that people have noticed and are drawn to and want to know how. So it's like, what is that? And it's beyond the like seven step model of business creation or whatever. Um, it's deeper than that. It's a it's a ephemeral. It's it's like an innate limbic system kind of thing that has been developed over time. And how do I describe that to people? And um, the way that I sort of landed on my my how to do magic <laughs> is um this thing called the Edgewalker Manifesto. I kind of wrote, just wrote a bunch of point form things down, mind mapped it, and then figured out the themes and then actually, like, what, what is this thing that wants to come through that ultimately came from, I think I've learned how to do it by doing crazy stuff <laughs> that <laughs> that uh, seemed really out of the ordinary and was to, to many degrees risky, you know, in different areas of, of my world in many different years, really edgy, off kilter, not part of mainstream kind of living. And through those really edgy experiences, realized that whatever the box is or whatever the conditioning is that we grow up with, the fields that we are born into, our families, our social communities, whatever, our faiths, all of that are one of part of what it is that we are are capable of but there's so much more and then how to learn those things um and then bring what we want into you know synthesize our our being for to live our lives with mm. um, is important and the magical part i think in terms of how to create magic um i was thinking about this because we were having this show like like um when you're having experiences at your edges intentionally, so the, I mean, they're going to happen anyway, you know, through because life, but intentionally, um, we're, we can be able to bring a certain kind of awareness to it, self-awareness, where we're observing the experience, or we're observing the ego identity of us going through that. But with practice, um, you can sort of step back from a place of awareness that isn't your ego. Mm. Um, it, I mean, we can feel, I mean, the simplest example of that is just traveling, right? When we're traveling, 
there's some kind of freedom in our behavior that we have that we don't have when we're back in our hometowns because of just so much newness and anonymity and we're just sort of popped out of our regular way of being thinking brain maps ecosystem and i think it's that space finding ways that we can access that state that is deeper or wider or beyond or instead of or including um ego awareness and apply that engage from there through there have that make the magic and so getting edgy finding edges finding those uncomfortable zones doing risky things um helps us get there faster it helps us intentionally hit those flow states i think is one way to put it. i can share this yeah, let's share. I have a million questions, but I want to, I think this is, you shared this with me a little while ago and I just, it like lights up my whole nervous system with excitement. So yes, please share it. And to those listening, listen up because it's amazing. Yay. All right. Be seduced by horizons. Be delighted by cliffs. Know the difference. Indulge a commitment to firsts. Become your own lighthouse. Embrace uncertainty like a surfer does waves. Make your taboos your bucket list. Be fluid with your identity. Become exceptional at entering other people's worlds. Cultivate surrender. Hire people to take you out of control. Set up soft landings. Build a haven on solid ground. Make your body happy. Fuck. Don't give a fuck. Connect opposites. Only give what you want to. Want to give everything. Show off your scars with pride. Wrap yourself in beauty. Become a bridge for other edge walkers. Never cross an edge in order to prove something. When you find yourself in hell, help others. It's the shortcut out. At the peaks, ask yourself, who is having this experience? It's not about you. Oh, every time I hear that or see that or read that, like different pieces stand out at different times. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about, I guess I have two questions, like the place from which this emerged in you Mm -hmm. and how you how you use this um the place from which it emerged in me um i'd gotten to a point i you know i've been doing all sorts of journeying traditionals and non-traditionals for so long and a few years ago i'd come to a place after working with a really powerful teacher where i was kind of good like i i no longer was on purpose uh, with my career, I, I, I plateaued nicely at 200, 300K a year. I loved what I was doing, but it was no longer this like mission in life that I had, you know, like my purpose, my meaning, you know, make your life have meaning and all that stuff um, was no longer the case. It was just what I love to do, but that was it. Um, it wasn't pulling me forward in the way that it was when I was younger and I was proving myself and I had to learn how to like, what do I do? Right. I was just so into purpose and I was so into all the stuff. And I'd, I'd gotten to this place where sort of the void, the insignificance of it all stopped being scary. And I no longer felt the need to prove anything or, or to try to reach for something in order to be okay or in order for my life to have meaning. So then everything was great. And I was really asking myself, you know, what's the point? Not in a cynical, pessimistic way, but it's like, okay, so now that we've reached a level where we're no longer trying to fill a hole, then what? <laughs> Why move forward? What's interesting now? Mm. Um, and I sat with it and I meditated with it and I coached around it and I did, you know, all the, the journaling around it and art around it and stuff. And I did an ayahuasca journey about it and nothing came. Um, 
and I just let the questions sit. And about two weeks after that journey, I woke up in the middle of the night and pulled my computer off the floor and just really thought to answer the question, how do I do what I do? Didn't know what would come of it. But this is ultimately what came out of that. And I think it came out of holding that question. What, what is the, what is next? What is, what's the interesting, meaningful learnings that I've had that others might want to know? Um, and what's a quick way for them to get it? I, you know why I love that so much because it kind of reminds me of, it's like, there's something subtly, but a really profoundly different about the way that you talk about being at your edge. And I think it's what you just mm -hmm. described in not being at your edge to prove some point or to fill some void or to create significance in some way. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really subtle, but very profoundly different. It's kind of like, uh, sometimes I, I think like, okay, I'm learning this like spiritual tool or this business tool, like who's using it, me or my ego? Because right, right. It's a different outcome. <laughs> and I really like, uh, it also reminds me of the, the, the book, The Artist's Journey by Stephen Pressfield. Mm -hmm. I, I asked myself a similar question for a long time. What comes after the hero's journey? Oh, that's a good question. Because otherwise you just keep recreating your hero's journey over and over, right. and over and over again. Right. I really love that how you shared this, that it was, that it was a, an emergence of a different, a different way of creating a different way of being at your edge. The mm -hmm. one the part that particularly stands out is when you said, um, <clears throat> you'll have to tell me what came before it, but you said set up, set up soft landings. Was it hire people to take you out of control? Uh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, good memory. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you're going to fall on your face, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> something all at some point but it's okay make it that it's okay <laughs> can you talk just a little bit more about i feel like this is important because i i want to slow down to really talk about edge because i think the context through which most people hear about being at your edge is this really kind of gritty intense product like you know produce results kind of push yeah. and it's not that this this doesn't create, this creates incredible results, but it's not that, right? It's not that, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a much more, um, it's, it's not a push force energy vibe. It's an innate curiosity to know what's around the corner because that's the most interesting thing in life. You know, like the most interesting thing in the world isn't, can I get a bigger house with a bigger TV for me? <laughs> my people, the most interesting thing. I mean, those are also great. It's not like I don't want those things, but like the most interesting thing is what is truth? What am I capable of? What is consciousness? What is this system, nervous system that is a fucking miracle that I don't know, swearing yeah. uh, miracle <laughs> that we we've gotten, we have such a short time with what can it do, you know, and then what can we do? And I think, you know, for me, for this is like, how can we use it to help other people? And as we are curious about that for ourselves and have different practices and different areas that we study and whatever, it isn't, you don't need to push it because it's so innately interesting that it's gamifying stuff, right? I love, I love games. That's another reason. It's like, I just want to, like, it's just inherently filled with dopamine. It's that you don't need to convince me and I don't need to force myself to go search out the next mystery, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting in terms of real world practical application. Let's talk social media. Yeah. Um, when, whenever I show up on social media in a genuine way where it's like, it, like it, the things happen, I'm just natural, authentic, speaking from my heart, really give a shit about what I'm saying, right? It, it connected to this place, the, community building the engagement the relationship building is so real people feel that and then it's it works really really well in terms of the things and outcomes i want for my business and then i have to kind of deal with like but is it okay if i use it that way whatever whatever and then like right now i'm i'm playing with scaling and so i have a team and i'm doing all this social media stuff and online marketing and, and i'm creating content in order to the algorithm right creating content in order to numbers yeah. which are important as a business person to not, you know, that's an edge for me, right? Caring about that stuff. Mm. Um, but I find 
it kind of hacks into my brain and from where I create online. Because if I'm creating in order to how many likes, views, comments, engagement, just my soul can't come up with something interesting for myself because mm -hmm. I'm just all up here. And if I just put it down and talk to my people right, about it, um, it's just balloons and flowers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you weave the two in, right? Um, in, in a practical kind of way. But if I had to go one or the other, I would definitely lean into the real energetic communication right in the moment. But I love that you, it seems to me that you, I mean, maybe sometimes you do, maybe sometimes you don't, but it seems like you, you do weave them together really well. Depends who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so resistant. I'm really resistant. It's like I hired a team and they're pulling me kicking and screaming into best practices in social media land because I don't want to do it like a robot, you know, like anything that begins to feel automatic pilot or like in order to fill slots on something, it just, that's not the point. Yeah. Right. It moves it away from the point. And I think that's kind of the hustle, hustle, push, push edge that is not accurate to the magical creating that we're talking about. Yeah. Right. Versus, you know, what is something so compelling? What is such an interesting, compelling game I can create for myself? Or what is something I so passionately want to share about today? Right. And how do I keep myself interested to want to passionately share in a kind of consistent way? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, truly and genuinely. Otherwise, you know, we, we just get, I don't know, like, like a water that doesn't, like a plant that doesn't get watered, you know? It, you know, I, I really like this idea of, because I see this a lot. I see it in myself. I see it with my clients mm -hmm. that we, we want to create a result. We get like really hard set on a particular result. So we get into a particular, whether it's like a seven step system or best practices, you, you really focus on the how. And then you see it all the time. We kind of like bail on it because it gets a little boring or routine mm -hmm. or, and so can you, I, I, I think you were just sort of talking about this, but can you talk more about how you dance with that edge? Because I know the tendency in me in a lot of, because I work with a lot of entrepreneurial spirited folks, which is great, but the tendency I think at that point can be that you don't stay long enough Right, to see the, uh, the thing happen. Yeah. yeah, can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's important to have the awareness that whatever tool or path you decide to create the funnel or to create the social media campaigns or to create the whatever it is that you're creating, write the book, whatever, it all takes time and, and just know that, right? So your expectation is in a year or two years, if I can do this consistently, what will happen? Not in a month or two. And then it stops. I think we we get it's a huge disservice to promise quick results and stuff like that that the, all the teachers teach us on online marketing um so one is that have that expectation but then it's the what's the want to right it's really just nurturing the want to to keep yourself inherently excited as much as possible and you know that you're going to have the days that are the blue collar days where you don't really care and you don't really want to and just do it you know like for a few more days while you take care to inspire yourself mm -hmm. So keeping yourself inspired is part of the job. Mm -hmm. Reading the books and going to the ceremonies and having the edgy experiences and keeping yourself learning in an exciting way for yourself, right? Will give you the, the stuff to keep going. Mm -hmm. right? So that's a really interesting way to, to look at that. I've never looked at the, the, the books and the ceremonies as, as, kind of the, the inspirational fuel, so to speak. And mm -hmm. I think, and neither right or wrong, but when we, I've always looked at those things like, oh, this is the thing I need to do to move the block to get the result. And right. I think what can happen, and I've seen this a lot with my clients, is mm -hmm. they, you go into this kind of like transformation spiral hoping for results. Mm -hmm. But really those kind of, they're not, they're totally interconnected, but it really is the, like the work that creates the result. And then this is like the thing you do over here to like keep you inspired and new and expanding and fresh. And it's actually very helpful to look at them in that way. 
I, I mean, I think you can't, as a, as a, I, I speak to coaches, I work with coaches, so that that's who I know in order for, I mean, it's all relationship building and all that, which is inherently the job that we love to do anyway, but we still have to do marketing and we still have to do those things if we want to be visible and known, especially in a really saturated market. So how do we do that? You, you just cannot get away from the fact that if you're inspired, it's easy. And if you're not, and you're saying the same thing again and again, it feels like death. <laughs> awful. <laughs> it's so boring and flat and terrible. Um, so ke keeping ourselves away, like just, oh my God, this cool new thing, whatever yours is, right? Mm -hmm. We just want to share that. And then when we share that, we, I, guys, I just, a whole new, cool new thing, you know, like for me, it was like art. Whoa. During the, during COVID, like I started doing art. Oh, cool. It's like, oh my God, everyone, cool new thing, whatever yours is. Um, I can't tell you how much energy happened around me posting art every day, mm. right? Not that I'm an artist, but my business did a lot better because I was genuinely like, hey, yeah. keep yourself alive. And so we have the blocks and we have the stuck stuff and the limiting beliefs. So our personal work works for that as well. Mm -hmm. But we can also leverage it to, to sort of bring in to the actual juice for the marketing so we're not pushing we're just shining yeah you know yeah, Design yeah. Visibly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and i feel like it makes it makes so much sense in terms of presenting let's say you already know what you're doing and you're on your path and you're you know you're in the slow build but i it seems that this can we talk about also how being an edge walker and you can either just speak from just like the general experience of being an edge rocker or distinct aspects of the manifesto. Mm -hmm. You're in a space where you're either you've kind of been just in the like rhythm of a particular path for a long time and it's, you're wanting something new mm -hmm. or like you're, you're very clear that like you want something new and you're on this path and it's super frustrating, but you don't know what that next thing looks like. Mm. Um, I think it's the fourth one down, indulge a commitment to firsts. Mm. Talk about that. <laughs> that's the, be, be a beginner, you know, beginner's mind all the time. I like, I don't know my Enneagram seven personality. Uh, I'm also a seven <laughs> wing eight. <laughs> I think a lot of coaches are uh, just naturally shiny red ball, shiny red ball, you know, and it, 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 it can take us off track so easily. Yes. Oh, this new thing. Oh, this new thing. You know, and we have the energy for it for a month or two. And then it's like, meh, meh, okay, I know how to do this now. Next. Right. Um, we can be aware of that. We can use the benefit of it to like quick start and have fun. Right. And then we got to just keep it fun. And be smart about it. Right. Like, like learn your system, learn how you work, use it to its benefits and where you see that it's make, find a way to keep it fun for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe do the same thing, but do it with a little bit of a different edge or do the same thing and make it a little bit harder somehow, a little bit scarier. Mm -hmm. I think you can do the same thing and then create the circumstances that make it scary, exciting. It, it's, and then it's new again. You're still at a beginning, like for, we were talking right before, it's like, I've never used StreamYard. What is this? Yeah. Right. And there's sort of this block around technology that I have where like, I don't want to, it's all so complicated to my brain. Right. And it takes, I will resist it and not be interested for like six months. And then something, okay, I said, I'll be on the podcast. Fuck, I gotta learn technology. Right. <laughs> Pushes you into the new territory. And then all of a sudden you have access to this whole new world. So it's kind of like, beginning again and again and again and again. Wow. I love that. It's so different. How you explained it is so different than how I assumed what that meant, you know, because I heard that like a seven would hear it. <laughs> like you didn't say like indulge a commitment to new, you said to first. And I was like, different, different, different. <laughs> it's both. It's both. It's both. It is both. But this is a really yeah. cool iteration of firsts, right? Because mm -hmm. It does. It, it it infuses a fresh edginess to, you know, what could it, I mean, it, you could even take it as far as like how it answering your emails in a, in a first, like a new first mm -hmm. way. 
look. Totally. That's really totally. cool. Yep. Also, I think it requires, it's not in the manifesto, but it's a requirement. If you decide to live this way, it's very childlike and fun. It's very much like the fool card in the tarot deck. It's like the Joker. Um, there's a there, there, and there's nothing there. Like it, it's everything and nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be able to not be stuck on your pride or who you are or mean. You got to be important. So there's that aspect of it. And so this, this indulging a commitment to firsts, the thrill, the impetus that propels us forward is, is learning, is the need, like growing, ex exploring in that way, expanding with the newnesses of the new things you're discovering, curiosity. But it isn't so much getting turned on by being the master expert. You become the master expert anyway, but the, the you have to be okay with the thing that happens, the um, imposter syndrome in real world application, right? Like, I'm so nervous because there were 10 other coaches in this scenario and they were all better than me, right? Like, like comparing ourselves to everybody else's lives or comparing ourselves to everybody else's email lists or compare, you know, their yeah. coaching program, they must be, you know, if you're living this way, you're going to not be, you're, it's going to drive you crazy if you care and you're comparing yourself like that, yeah. you're instead landing or leaning on the leverage of the beginner. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and I'm trying it out and it's amazing and I'm amazing and everything's perfect. And whoever wants to come on the ride with me while I figure this out, yay. And I don't know, no, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. If you can own that in a powerful way and have it not mean anything bad about you, you're good to go. Is that what you mean when you say, um, search for her, what do you something about horizons and, and avoid cliffs, know the difference? There, well, don't avoid anything. Be seduced by horizons right. and be delighted by cliffs. So, th but they're two different kinds of edges. One is like, I don't know what's over there and I'm gonna like be walking down the path and I, got, I can't, I gotta go see what's around the next corner, right? Totally different than like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to throw myself into a really risky situation right now and jump off this cliff. And it's a major one. Got it. I may land on my face, but I set up my soft landings, but like still, holy shit. Ah! You yeah. know, it's like, say yes, have no idea what you're doing. Do it anyway. That's a, mm -hmm. a three rules to success, right? It's just that yeah. launching yourself into the unknown of saying, you know, they, they call you to do the talk at the, whatever you feel insignificant. And why would they call me? And then you say yes. And you figure it out. Yeah. Sometimes you'll mess up. It's okay. It just comes with that and you don't mind. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. But more often than not, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. And, but I really like, I like the, the emphasis that you put on it being this kind of fool like mindset, because whether mm -hmm. you're already in business and you just want to like reach new heights or you're in that position where you have no idea what's next, but something has to be different. Mm -hmm. They're still really, it's still really relevant because I think in the first scenario where you want to reach new heights, you can get really attached to this like master, I'm the master expert obsession. And then on the flip side, it feels like harder to explore what could be next if you're really, really attached to every single move producing some tangible change in direction. But layering in this aspect of horizons and cliffs and understanding and knowing the difference, I also think is totally relevant because I don't know, it took me a really long time and I'm probably still like baby, 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 baby at it. N not just looking for another cliff. That's the seven in me, right? Like uh -huh. I jump, how, how hard can I land? Like <laughs> I wasn't setting up soft landings. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, so I think that this is a really, really fun different way of experience like a horizon is an edge as much as a cliff is and that is really cool you you, you can you can take each you get to know yourself and you can sort of sense what's optimal so in terms of the your system your nervous system your consciousness your awareness your energetic system whatever mind um your energy levels, your age, where you're at in your career, the context of the world at the time, like you have, you take it all, you know, it's system thinking and, and consider knowing what I know about how I work and what it is and what I want and all the things, what is the optimal way to engage right now? 
Mm. Is it a cliff? Is it horizon? Do I need to go a little slower to flow? Because if I go too hard, I'll just crash and I'll freeze. And then I'm going to be stuck here for two years, taking myself out of like whatever hole I got myself into. Because I literally just did that. (laughs) (laughs) And I was, you said it so eloquently to the system thinking. I, yeah. you, cause I, the question that I had in my mind that like just popped in right before you said that would, what would be required? Like what's the prerequisite to be really mm-hmm. effective at this? So will you talk about that? Th- this might be my last question. I might throw another one in, but will you talk about this system mm-hmm. thinking? Because I feel like this is a massive, massive missed understanding. Okay. Oh my God. False dichotomies. <laughs> I see them everywhere. They're everywhere. And me too, right? It's like, if I I really want this, therefore I can't this. Mm-hmm. It's either this or that. If this, then not that. And it's so much more complex. Reality is so much more complex than that, right? Like, I am really good at this and I totally suck at it. I'm really energized and I'm so lazy. I, I'm a total liar and I've never told a lie in my life. You know, like I'm so messed up and broken and why would anybody hire me as their coach? And I'm truly a genius at what I do. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we don't have to, I mean, keeping an eye out, I want to, I should add this in there because I've been saying this a lot in the last year or so, keeping an eye out for false dichotomies, Mm. the, the contexts that the decisions we're making are in change. There's a lot of fluidity. Our identity changes, right? So just being able to, in every moment, having just presence in every moment to gauge what is the context now, right? Is is it this versus this? And then they're both, is it like 16 things happening at once and how do they fit in? Um, we'll, we'll be much happier because, because if we simplify too much, Either way, either decision or either thing that we end up thinking or choosing will let us down somehow and we'll feel like we're failing and we didn't do it right. But we couldn't because it was in un, un, it's based on an untruth, right? Don't be scared of the complexities. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I just, I love, I love that for a couple of reasons. One, I often forget to think about our belief systems in terms of a system. <laughs> it's a part of a system. Right. Like, it's in there. In this particular system, like, you know, just as an example, the last, I have a two and a two month, two year and three or four month old. And it did honestly did not occur to me until like two weeks ago, despite like 20 different people in my life directly, clearly, and indisputably explaining this to me. Yeah. <laughs> it occurred to me. Like, I had still been trying to operate in the world and in my business pre-pregnancy. Oh, <laughs> I just tried to cram it into less time and less energy. Right. That's what I was like unconsciously bringing to the, okay, well, yeah, I'm not working a hundred hours anymore. So I've adapted like uh, <laughs> 2% of the 98 required. And, and so it was this idea that like, I was not, I wasn't factoring in the different like the direction I wanted to take my business, the way I want, well, I wanted to structure my business, the projects I was taking on based on the new, like totally changed circumstances. So I was bringing in this old way of thinking like, oh, if I change that, it means something. Yes. Instead of being like, wait, this, you know, this whole, like this whole new way of like the, my life looks right now completely changes the way that, that particular belief sat a year ago or two years ago. Exactly. Yes. Totally. So we don't need to, I think, I think I, a lot of my clients grapple with this feeling of failure because they're not at whatever the level before or what they knew worked, et cetera. And they're the acknowledgement, this being fluid with your identity, you're just going to just keep changing. Mm. So really just bring it to now. And you don't need to keep creating the same thing that you were creating before because of the time you spent creating it then. That is very freeing. It really is freeing. (laughs) All the pressure off. Just now. (laughs) Just now. I mean, that was the other thing I heard when you were talking about the false dichotomies. It was like, I feel like, and maybe you you can add or, or change this, like a false dichotomy could only exist 
somewhere other than now. Do you know what I mean? So if I'm thinking yeah. about, I'm a, you know, it was a great example because I'm doing a talk in a few, in a few um, months at this like big organization that I'm like, oh my God, you know, it kicks up all this imposter syndrome. So, and I'm a fucking awesome coach and like nobody else could speak on this the way I speak, like they exist together. But I, I feel like there is something really relevant about looking at when we feel those really kind of like incongruent experiences, how, how looking at them in the present moment helps dissolve that. Yes. Does that make sense? It does. I, I think, um, so one of the modalities that I work with is called generative trance, which is a sort of hypnosis, but not quite state. Um, but it is a state where you are connected with the unconscious mind and the conscious mind is also there. We're not putting it to sleep to get in there and do stuff. It's there both. Uh, but, but it is connecting with that unconscious place intentionally. And one of the beautiful things of the unconscious mind is that it has no problem holding opposites at the same time. Mm. So it is this, and it is this, and it is much, much more. Mm -hmm. There's even more than that. Mm. Right? I am scared and I am amazing. And I'm also all these other things. And then we bring like the awareness that is aware of that is present. You have to be in the present to have that awareness, exactly like you said. Oh, you know what I love about that? It, it, it It's a question that I've often asked myself and asked my clients, you know, when they have these two, like this, this or this kind of experience that they're having. One of the questions that I often ask is what else could be true? Mm -hmm. But I, the question that just came up when you were talking, which I love is what is a circumstance in which both of these could be true? Mm -hmm. it, it's equally freeing. I think some, you know, when we're thinking about like, what else could be true? It kind of like infers like one of these being wrong or invaluable or something, but actually right. pulling it back to like the territory on which they sit. Yes. Big enough for them both to be true. It actually right it's equal yeah. amounts of freedom and liberation, which is really cool. Totally. Totally. And if you, you know, at the very bottom of the whole manifesto, it's not about you. And it's this you that we're all stuck on making sure is okay and doing the right thing and pride and all the things about it that's really scary if we're not taking care of this you thing um but if we just relax that we really can just sit in the rightness of this other you right nowness yeah. everything as it is is correct just being able to tell what it is acknowledging it approving of it and then making choices and decisions that include all of that forward Mm. engaging forward that's magic that's amazing yeah well, let's end there because i love i don't want to ruin any of it it was beautiful <laughs> so you are you know in just in the few interactions that we've had like i'm i always feel just uplifted and tuned into mm. more magic and inspired so first of all i'm really really grateful that you that you that you do lean into the edges that you do because you know it impacts me. I know it impacts other people, but it impacts me. So thank you. And thank you for being here for this. So for those who are definitely going to want more of you. I know we talked about two different courses that you have. You have the lighthouse adventure, which is so much fun. And you have to talk about that. And then you have hatch. So tell us a little bit about those and where people can connect with you to join them. Yeah. So Christina Berkeley.com. Oh, they're all there. You could find it all there. Um, the two, so I've just really in the last couple of years, kind of when the Ed Rocker Manifesto came in, um, I've just really honed in on working with coaches. I've worked with many, many other people over my career, but I just really love it um, for reasons I can go into. But And I created a course called The Lighthouse Adventure that just is this dump of everything I wish I knew when I started. So it's really building new coaches up or coaches that are transitioning from other careers into coaching um, with your own manifesto. What is it that you're doing? It's not your marketing material. It's the soul of what it is, this thing that you're in search of and channeling through you, how to talk about what it is that you do, how to set up all of your systems, how to 
go out there and start meeting people and building community. So we talk about marketing, but in a really organic way where you're building from flow and shining, not from becoming an internet marketer and really, really good at that, even though there may be little limits of that. And then what do you do with money and how do you make proposals and how do you do your packages and how do you polish up your coaching so that you're using those powerful skills that people will just be bringing people to you. So you're building a word of mouth and referral based practice. That's really amazing. Um, and what's really fun about it is it's a game. <laughs> There's a, um, it's an adventure. I set it up, right? Because it's all about taking action. Just learning all the stuff is not helpful unless you're doing it. So there are 56 pineapples on a treasure map pineapples, that you're collecting. And each one is a challenge for you to do. And when you do it and you post it in our Facebook group and we talk about the insights and everything that happened, you got your pineapple. And if you get 56 of them, all of them, one, you're going to have a great business. And two, we're going to have a three-hour intensive where we really dial it in to really high-end boutique it. So that's the online course version. Um, and then there's Hatch, which is my very small um, group accelerator for coaches that I run twice a year. And I just started enrolling for this one right now. So this is really great timing. Thank you. Um, where we have the course and all of that, but we really hold each other's hands and everyone is building their practice through service, through connection, with real um, energy and magic and love and action um, so that we do it in a way that feels like we're in integrity, not like we're like skinny salespeople. It goes in so many different places. There's spreadsheets and tracking, and then there's deep, deep, beautiful spiritual inner work that goes along with it. People become best friends for life. Our program. The perfect embodiment on both courses of practical and magical. I love it. Yeah. And I, I told you before we started, but I love that you collect pineapples. What a fun, like that's, that's amazing. That's so fun. So um, they both sound incredible, no doubt, massively impactful, deeply aligning and a whole lot of fun. So for those of you, definitely reach out to Christina. If she inspires you with Christina, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. This is really fun. <laughs> All right. Bye for now. Bye.